Hello, my name is Ken Schaefer, and I'm President and Lead Program Architect for Innoventive Software, makers of Frameforge Previs Studio and the Real D Professional Stereo Calculator for iPhone and iPad. In this video session, I'll be going through the Stereo Calculator's Camera Rig Settings page, and I'll be explaining all of its available options. Choosing the correct settings on this page is as important as picking the right values on the Screen Settings page, as the Stereo Calculator uses the two in combination to produce all of its calculations. It is thus vital that you not only set up both your target screen size and desired maximum parallax, as described in the video session on Screen Settings, but you also match the camera rig settings that you enter on this page to the physical equipment that you'll actually be using. So, the first thing you'll want to do on this page is select your camera. You do that by tapping the Cameras button, and a list of camera categories will appear. The first six are semi-generic stock cameras, like standard HD video or 35mm film. However, to ensure that the calculator produces the most accurate results, we recommend that you choose your specific model of camera, if at all possible. If a preset for your camera doesn't already exist, but you know the camera's parameters, then simply tap the Custom line, followed by the plus button to the left of Add Custom Camera. You'll then give it a name, put in the film or CCD's height in millimeters, which you'll have to get from the manufacturer or knowledgeable rental house or the like. While you do have the option to select from common film CCD heights, but if you do so, you will see that there's quite a range of different sizes, and if you choose one that doesn't quite match your camera, then the calculations will be off, perhaps quite significantly. In any case, you then enter the aspect ratio as a value of width to a height of 1. For example, if you have a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, you'd enter 1.78 to 1. Then click Save, and your camera appears on this list of custom cameras. Tap it, and you'll be returned to the main camera rig settings page with your newly defined camera selected. The next thing we need to do is to tell the calculator the parameters of the rig you'll be using. Since some rigs have their interaxial range calibrated in millimeters, while others are in inches, the calculator lets you set the units for the interaxial range separately from the overall units used elsewhere in the app. To switch between the units, you just tap this control, and the IA range will be converted from one unit to the other automatically. Once you've selected the appropriate units, then you'll need to enter the minimum and maximum interaxial ranges. If you're shooting with a mirror rig, then the minimum will typically be zero. If you're shooting with a side-by-side -side rig, then it may be the minimum that the rig is capable of, or it may be larger due to the width of the cameras you are using, so make sure to take that into account. You'll next set the maximum interaxial range, which will probably simply be the maximum of the rig, and only in very rare cases will it be affected by the width of the cameras. The next field underneath that is the maximum convergence angle. If you're shooting parallel, which I'll get into in a moment, then this field will be maximum hit. In the case of the max convergence angle, what you enter may either be the maximum convergence angle that you'll accept, usually limited to avoid keystone distortions, or it might be limited by the degree at which the lenses of the two cameras would collide. If it's maximum hit, then you're telling the calculator the maximum amount of frame you are willing to lose due to the image loss of shifting that hit involves. If you don't have strong opinions about this, for example, if you're shooting at deliberately loose framing at 4K for a 2K crop, then you could simply enter a very large number and basically not worry about it. As I mentioned before, the calculator supports both converged and parallel shooting styles, plus two subtypes of each. To choose the shooting style that you'll be using, simply tap this control and you'll be taken to a new screen where you can select the style you want. The first style listed is Converged Anti-Keystone. When you have this selected, then the calculator reports angular convergence in degrees, and it assumes you're going to do some anti-keystoning warping in post, or you expect the keystoning effects to be so negligible that you aren't concerned about any potential artifacts. The next style is converged uncorrected, and when you have this style selected, then the calculator will report angular divergence in degrees as before, but it will also show you the additional parallax caused by keystoning to be found at the frame edges. The first parallel style is hit in percentage, and when this is selected, the calculator will display hit as a percentage of your total screen width. 
Finally, Parallel Hit in Pixels will show you the hit in pixels based on the recording width in pixels which appears when the style is selected. Right now, however, let's go back to the Converge to Uncorrected style as that shows the most information on the calculator. The final thing we'll do on this page is select a prime set, which is a collection of all available primes, or a zoom range, depending on the camera equipment you have. To select a prime set, you simply click this Primes button. A list of many standard sets appear. You can see what is in any given set simply by pressing the blue angle button to the right of that set, and you'll see all the available primes. If there's a prime set that does not exist, of course, you simply scroll to the bottom and click Custom. You would then click the plus button to add a new prime set, enter in its name, add lenses, and so on. Since this is very similar to adding a custom camera, I won't go through all the details. To select any given prime set, all you do is click on it. You can now see that it's selected. If you're using a zoom lens, instead you would click the zoom button. You then have a minimum and maximum zoom range. You can then click in and change these values as desired. Click Use Zoom Range, and there's your zoom range. OK, we're finally ready to calculate. So you click the Calculate button. Our lawyers, of course, put up a small disclaimer. Read that, click I Agree, and then you'll be taken to the RigSolver Vertical Calculator screen.